Do you remember 2020? I mean, you'd be crazy not to. Aside from all the COVID stuff happening in the world, the F1 season that year was pretty crazy too. Of course, it started very late and it had a whole bunch of tracks on it for the first time, but as well as that, we saw two drivers take their first ever win during two very hectic races. One of these drivers was Sergio Perez, who had gone on to take another two wins for Red Bull, and the other one was Pierre Gasly. And it's the latter I want to talk about today, because up until now, he's been recognized as one of the best midfield drivers on the grid, making a habit of taking cars to the podium that really shouldn't be there. But this year, something seems to have changed. Pierre's best result is fifth, and there have only been two other occasions where he scored points. Granted, the AlphaTauri this year doesn't seem to be as good a car as the 2021 car was, but still, I think it's fair to say that Gasly's having a pretty bad season by his standards. So, what's going on with Pierre Gasly? The 2021 season ended for Pierre Gasly with an impressive 5th place, which left him 9th in the championship with a career-best 110 points. People were even talking about the prospect of him coming back to Red Bull, two and a half years after he was dropped by them. Now, with Sergio Perez signed on for 2022, there was no chance of him being back this year, but 2023 remained fair game, and if he wanted to have a crack at that seat, then he'd need two things to happen. Firstly, he needed to have another season like 2021, and secondly, Checo had to have a bad season. And sadly for Pierre, neither of those things have happened, so Checo is signed to Red Bull until 2024, and Gasly will be back with the junior team for another year in 2023. If I was Gasly, I would never have accepted another contract with AlphaTauri, and that's in no way meant to be a dig at the team. The fact is that based off 2021's results, Pierre should have been at least near to one of the top teams, maybe McLaren, for instance. But that's enough context. What exactly do I mean when I say this season's been a bad one? In Pierre's first round of the season, he set the fastest lap in FP1 and qualified 10th for the race. He was running fairly well until lap 46 when his engine exploded, and that was the end of that. In the next two races, he finished 8th and 9th respectively, before a 12th place finish in Imola started his run of no points. In Miami, the following race, Pierre appeared to have no idea how to check his wing mirrors. So after having driven like he's never been near a race car in his life for the previous few corners, he rejoined the track and cut straight across Lando Norris, taking them both out of the race. In Spain, he finished 13th, and in Monaco, he was 11th. Then, in Baku, he came back with a 5th place finish, which, as I mentioned at the start of this video, was his best race finish of the season so far. In Canada, he finished 14th, and then in Britain, he had another DNF after being involved in a needless first lap crash. Now, I've already placed blame on George Russell for the crash on this channel, but even so, Pierre was going for a gap that was rapidly closing, so he definitely had a part to play in this, even if it wasn't the major one. And now we move on to the race that sort of prompted me to make this video, Austria. At the start of the sprint race, Pierre cut across Lewis Hamilton and sent himself spinning to the back of the grid, wasting a 10th place qualifying position, and meaning he'd start the race from 14th. Gasly joined the club of people who got 5 second penalties for track limits in the race, and then decided that 5 seconds wasn't enough, so he decided to smash into Sebastian Vettel in another display this year that he has no idea how big his car is, and served another 5 second penalty, before finally getting himself investigated for not serving the penalty in full. Although, that did come back clear. Now, I don't hate Pierre Gasly. In previous years, I've seen him as a man who can always get the best out of his car, and I've really respected him for that. But this season, for whatever reason, he's just not been very good. It's not like he's not had pace or anything, because the AlphaTauri this year isn't very good either. Either, and Pierre is still beating Yuki Tsunoda, so that's the only comparison we can fairly make. But the thing is, you can be the fastest driver in the world, but if you keep smashing into people in the races, then you aren't going to get many points. I can't think of any other driver this season that's had more crashes with other drivers, which says a lot. I mean, it could be that it says a lot about my memory, but hopefully it's not. So, he's having a bad season. So what? Well, this season is pretty crucial for Gasly, regardless of who he's driving for in 2023. By the time it comes to discuss contracts again, I don't think AlphaTauri will be very willing to renew his contract, especially given how many drivers Red Bull have got waiting for a seat. And let's say he doesn't get his contract renewed. It's not all that likely that another team will be willing to take him in given his current season's form, so the pressure is very much on Gasly to turn things around. So, can he? Well, the start to this season very much reminds me of the start he had in 2019. Now, you can't be demoted any further than AlphaTauri, but even so, there's a chance he could come back after the summer break rejuvenated. The pace of the car is out of his control, and as long as he keeps beating Yuki and starts checking his mirrors more often, then I don't think he's going to get fired. But, and you're going to have to put your tinfoil hats on for this, what if Pierre is trying to get himself fired? Maybe he's trying to cause as much damage to cars and appear so out of form that AlphaTauri just have to fire him. Obviously, I don't actually believe this, but it's some food for thought at least. But calling this season bad is probably a bit of an overstatement. Sure, he's had cleaner starts to seasons in terms of not destroying the car, but with a car as bad as the 2022 AlphaTauri, it's hard to tell if he's lost any pace. Maybe he has, thanks to the different car being different to drive, but maybe he hasn't. Ultimately, only the team will have a clear picture, and so in a way, it doesn't matter how we perceive him. But yeah, I know this video was a bit short, but hopefully you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you did, then don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!